one. Hey there, I'm Shauna and I am going to show you how to access digital content through the Libby app by Overdrive. So Libby is compatible with Android devices, Apple devices, and it is also compatible with your Kindle. There are a few extra steps with Kindle, but Libby makes it really easy and guides you right through it. So if you watch this tutorial, you can figure out the extra steps and I'll try and point those out as well. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to your um, Play Store on your mobile device and you're gonna want to download Libby by Overdrive. It's going to look like a little girl behind a book. I've already downloaded it to this device, so I can just go ahead and open it. Now, when you open it for the first time, it'll ask if you have a library card and you tell it yes. And it's going to ask about adding a library. So here's a pro tip for you. When you add a library, you want to do it by zip code because there are lots of Madison County, Madison counties in the nation. Therefore, there are a lot of Madison County public libraries. So it'll get you to the right library and you won't have any snafus if you search by zip code. As you can see here, um, uh, the Mars Hill branch pops up. You'll see Hot Springs and Marshall, depending on the zip code that you put in. The other option that you may see as a library is the NC Kids Digital Library. Now this is great for parents if you wanna put a digital library on a device that the kids might use because that content is going to be for um, readers up to about fourth or fifth grade. So it does. you don't have to worry about the adult content if you um, select the NC Kids Digital Library. For readers like me, we might want to read something a little beyond fifth grade. So we're gonna choose the EINC library. It'll prompt you to sign in with your library card. You will need to choose the um, library systems. So you'll have to scroll down to Madison County Public Libraries. This is a consortium, just like we are part of the NC Cardinal Consortium. You can think of it as your card granting you access to two libraries. The physical library with branches in Mars Hill, Marshall, and Hot Springs, and the digital library. And there are two different consortiums, and that means that we share material with a group of libraries, and that makes it a lot more cost effective for us and everyone else to share that material. So when your card comes up, it'll tell you that it's, that it's linked. You have four possible loans, which is, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about it, you're downloading material to a mobile device. So you really don't want more than four things on there. You have four slots for holds. Just like at the physical library, if, uh, if a book is not available for checkout, you can place it on hold. You can have multiple cards linked to the app. So if you're going to do that and multiple people are gonna be reading on your device, you can rename the cards. That will help you keep everything straight. When you go to the library, there will always be um, some themes, um, some suggested reading titles, and you also have filters that you can use up here. So you can look at the newest or the most popular. You can also filter by subject, such as you see here. You can also tell it, show me what's available now so that you um, can check out something immediately. The magnifying glass is our icon that indicates that there's a search option here. You can search by title or um, author or even by series. So let's look at uh, Harry Potter. We know that this one has a lot of books in the series. And one thing that 
the Libby app will do for you is it will tell you what number it is in the series. So with this one, this indicates that it's ready for us to borrow. This one we would have to place on hold. Another thing I'll point out is that the little um, earbud icon indicates that this one is an audiobook. So you can filter further if you just want to see the audiobooks or if you want to just see the books. You can also um, tell it, show me just the books. And I can even go farther and tell it over here and under this menu to just show whatever is available now. If I click that and add that to my filters, then I've got 22 titles that I can click on and select from immediately. When I borrow a book, it's going to be placed right here with the book icons. That's called your shelf. The other thing about reading digitally that is really wonderful is that you can customize your reading scenario. When you check out a book, it will ask you, do you want to open it in Libby or Kindle? And you can go back and forth. Once you choose one, that doesn't mean that that's the only way you will ever have to read on the Libby app. When you download material for reading, if it's an ebook or a magazine, you can tell it what you want to read it with, what platform. If you choose Kindle, then it'll prompt you to go to your Amazon account and tell it where to deliver it. It's pretty user friendly. It'll walk you through step by step. This one I told just to read in the Libby app. So it opens up wherever you left off. And you can um, see here that it sh is showing two different pages. If I want to do more customization, all I need to do is tap in the center. I want to point out the A up here. This is the text menu. I can click on this, and this is where I can adjust um, my text, like how big it is on the page. Uh, maybe I would rather read in dark mode to give my eyes a little bit of a break. The other thing that I can look for is, the, is changing the font style. And one of the things that I think is really great is there is this open dyslexic font that is, um, is drawn for um, readers with dyslexia. So you can choose that and customize it so that you're um, more comfortable with that. The audiobooks work the same way. When you open your audiobook, if you tap in the center, you will get a menu that will allow you to speed up the audiobook or slow down the reader. You can also set a timer for it to read for a certain length of time. You also have a sleep mode that you can um, that you can use to turn off after a little bit of time if you like to listen to books as you fall asleep at night. This middle icon is just going to be your message center. Anything that has to do with your notifications. This also helps you to manage your cards. Um, and then the clock icon has to do with your history. The other thing that I really like is once you are um, finished with the book, you can return it early, but if it comes up due on that due date at that due time, it will um, disappear off your device. Now let's say, and this has happened, let's say that you're not finished with your book, but it's on hold for someone. So you can't, um, you can't get it and you're going to have to wait. You can put it back on hold and then you'll get a notification when it's ready for you to check it out again. It will recognize the device as long as it's the same, the same device. It'll recognize the device, open up your material, and pick up where you left off, which is great because you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to try and remember it because if you're anything like me, you've probably read a few books between now and then. So we know that during the winter months, sometimes the weather, the cold, it kind of is a deterrent for getting out and getting to the library. So we want to make sure that you stay warm and keep reading with Libby by Overdrive. Check it out. If you have any questions, just give us a call or send us an email and we're happy to walk you through it. Thanks. Happy reading.